Things are slowed down a little bit, not as near as much traffic out there as it used to be, or <laughs> people paying more attention. But there's one thing that I want to, or a couple of things. The reason we're meeting like this was because of the social distancing. And we have, we're required by law to uh, keep six feet between, and you can see it by the exit out there how many people we can see in this place. I was asked to use the um, kind of commission building, but they're using it tonight. So that's the reason we're here. I want to congratulate all of our seniors and, and uh, let everyone know that they're having a parade Thursday, leaving the high school at 6 o'clock. They'll go down Bakery Pack Drive, circle the courthouse, and come back up Phillips Avenue back to get out there and, and support our seniors and it's been a difficult time you know a lot of these kids didn't even get to play for a state championship or finish or uh, senior have a prom or anything like that and it, you know I feel for them uh, and one thing we are having 4th of July fireworks we're not having anything going on in the park uh, I got a call from Pyro shows they had people canceling uh, fireworks shows, and so he asked us if we still wanted it, and we could get it on the fourth and not see it. Out. It gets into the budgeted items, uh, so. Uh, and then, as I was saying before, Senator Blackburn is uh, sending a rep to town, uh, to our county, and the town because of all the flooding. They can help us with, and we're we are in the process of looking doing a countywide mitigation plan, and our biggest issue is prior code, and that's uh, quick. And so, and, but it's uh, it's going to take uh, take some work, and it's going to take a while, and it's going to take a uh, Corps of Engineers and TDAC allowing it to happen. So, but, uh, and that's all I have. Anybody else have anything? The seniors parade for sure is Thursday. Thursday night. I cut I checked it. Okay. Yeah. Thursday night, what time? Six o'clock. They'll leave the school at six o'clock. Okay. Thursday night to eleven. Yeah. Yeah. So all roads will be closed just like yeah, we're going to, uh, down the parade, bench a pack, and then they'll turn, uh, come back up Phillips and so, so what they'll do uh, from bench a pack move back to Phillips to keep them closed for there. I got a couple of names. Yeah. Or one. Uh, when are we going to see a lift for roads or something? Uh, in our work session, uh, Jim Hawk has done it. They're not doing any paving right now, and but I have a have a lift from him with Friday. Okay. Got you there. And then uh, I've got a couple of things, purchases we need to make. We need to approve if we can. Uh, what kind of purchases? Uh, one is for some seals for this uh, ladder truck over here uh, from Atlantic Coast Fire Trucks. Uh, well, 72877. 72877. You know, I, I've spoken with uh, Ryan several times. Mm -hmm. and we're, you know, we've asked everybody to cut back because the state has asked us to cut back purchases. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of, there's some invoices down there that uh, haven't been paid because they uh, didn't come to us. They went other places. So we I don't know. Any, I don't know anything about that, but I know the seven twenty eight seventy seven needs to be something we need to talk about and approve because it's going to take them six weeks to make these seals. Yeah. And because this truck's no longer being manufactured, this is the only company that makes them anymore. What truck is that? It's the ladder truck. The one we uh, bought last or uh, about three years ago. Yes. Yes. For 728 Who's the manufacturer of that? Uh, Simon Duplex is a manufacturer. They're out of business now. But the company's Atlantic Coast Fire Trucks is the only company that makes the, the makes the seal. Uh, Simon Duplex, isn't it, Paul? Simon, Simon Duplex? Yeah, they went out of business back in the 90s, and a couple of Appalachian manufacturers uh, bought their rights, uh, their parts inventory, their plans, and all that. And as I understand it, Smeal Fire Apparatus is the latest company to own the rights, therefore owning the parts inventory and whatnot. And this 
subsidiary of that company. Is, uh, the only source of the parts for that truck. Well, you know, the RV, I mean, if the fire department is going to start, instead of going after things that we need, this is something that needed to be done, and instead of going after stuff that we want, uh, you know, what the LED what, lighting. What is stuff we want after that we want? Well, all this LED lighting, eleven hundred something dollars worth of LED lighting wrap, uh, lap, a wrap lighting. I don't. Brian didn't even know. I don't know what a wrap lighting is. I don't either. I don't know what a wrap lighting is. But I know this is something that's leaking so bad that that truck needs it. And what is the? It's the seals for the water system. The seals for the water system. Mm -hmm. Well, I saw it down here when this house burned on Betsy Bank last year. It was. Water, 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 water up the leak than it is for the fire hose. The, oh, down here it's just mm -hmm. down there. Mm -hmm. so, okay. It's took that long to find a source to find out where the seals can be made. Um, well, to, up to the board to. Uh, well, we got to have it. Let's, let's get it. We need to have it. Um, Make a motion we purchase this. 72877 from Lank. Coast fire truck. Do you get uh, you gonna get uh, information to us? Is that what Josh brought in down here today, Paul? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he brought the, all the paperwork with it. Okay. So I, you make yeah. a motion. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's, just, let's get this thing through. So we don't leak one. So you made a motion. You made a motion, or my second. You second it. Yeah. Okay. I have a motion to second to purchase. The 728, and is there any more purchases here that you're going to? No, that's only that's only purchase I know. It's a, a 911. Okay. So, I have a motion and the second to a roll call vote. Alderman Duncan? Yes. Alderman West? Yes. Alderman Turner? Yes. Mayor Evans? Uh, yes. Now, I've got a question on these lights. What, what are they saying? What's wrap light? Is it the I lights on the outside? Idea. Is it the lights on the outside of the building? I have no idea what it is. It, we just got we got a, a statement from College Building Supply for eleven hundred something dollars and no invoices, and every one of them was signed by Josh Hook. Mm -hmm. So this has got to slow down. I mean, that's not a that's not a this is a need. Uh, the wrap lighting or whatever it is, Ryan Meeks didn't even know what it is. Mm -hmm. And and they, all this should be going through Ryan also. I mean, this is not something for Huck Shepherd to do on his own. And, and, and is this I, the thing we had the grant for and we lost the grant? I think it is. Well, it does. Well, losing the grant is not anybody's fault, but he said he lost the grant card and didn't get a, a credit card. First of all, nobody came to get a credit card to do it. You do the paperwork, bring it in there, and you order. How many times do we Hold on, hold on, whoa, whoa, whoa. We did that. No, wait, wait, wait. Let's talk about that for a minute. Well, if it's the one for the LED lights on the outside, we turned the paperwork in with a resolution that was uh, passed in January. The but nothing that, was ever brought in to purchase that. Nothing was brought in. It was stapled to the paperwork. The he said you had to have a credit card. Yeah, you, you don't, don't have, have a credit order. card. You'll have to order it because it's a no, big we can, we do that through vendor. We do it all the time. We call them. They send us a uh, uh, application. We send them tax. Uh, oh, we're a tax exempt. And so all of that wasn't done. I'll check up on that. I'll check okay, on that. check on. But I, but I know there's there. Uh, I talked to Ryan about it, and and none of that was none of that was turned in to us. We'll find out about that. But, uh, I know that they're, they're, they cut back on budget wise. I know they're they're severely under what their budget was, so they're saving. Well, it, it, the budget is way too much, in my opinion. Anyway, that's your opinion versus mine. Right, but you know, and that's like everything else. You know, we got we all have. Mm -hmm. That's right. Paul, what you have? Go ahead. I was contacted by Billy Simpson the other day, and he's had problems ever since the sidewalk vendor finished over there, or the sidewalk construction. Well, they took those big trees out of his yard. I talked to Ronnie Will, and Ronnie said that when they finished the sidewalk, uh, the construction company or whatever didn't have a dump truck, so 
Ronnie and the city trucks hauled dirt over to Billy's yard where they had dug those trees out of the ground. And that the dirt had come from various places on Betsy Pack and 7th Street. It was full of rocks, so they smoothed it out some way. Well, anyway, uh, Billy's got a bad wild mushroom problem. I know he's always kept his yard well manicured. And he's had problems. I don't know where I looked at it the other day. And they're migrating toward his house. So he's asked that we have one of the guys that's good with a backhoe, Marvin or Donald, scrape out that old dirt that they put in there and just put in some topsoil right there, out there to the sidewalk, and where he can replant that before those mushrooms take over his yard. I don't think that's uh, coming from the dirt. That's coming from the roots of those trees where they were cut down the roots or finally decaying out. Uh, you know, uh, all if you'll follow them, they're uh, coming from the, those stumps that were there. They're, they're roots because the roots weren't all gotten out of there. So, but uh, yeah, we'd be digging up his whole yard and redoing his yard right there. Now the mushrooms, if he doesn't want to mow the mushrooms, the city, I'll send the city crew down there to uh, mow that part of, over from it. They mow between the, or they weed it between the sidewalk and, you know, and they've even mowed down through their uh, time or two, too, with that uh, zero-turn mower and hadn't had any issues. So, I mean, it's uh, up the board, but these mushrooms look to me like, and I'll get somebody going there and check it, they're coming from the roots of those trees, because I've had it, too. Mine was pecan trees that I had cut down, and I had to deal with the mushroom till the roots were gone. So, and that took about 10 years. Well, I'll tell you what, I, yeah. based on what I saw, the, uh, the dirt that they put in versus what he had to begin with, uh, I think the man ought to have at least a chance of some topsoil in there. No more than that's going to cost us. It's not a big, huge area. And I'd make, a most, make an attempt to at least try to put him some decent dirt in there and then see what happens from there. But he's always kept a manicured yard as long as I remember. He didn't have this problem. And I remember the rocks and yeah. the things that were in the yard when they got fruit down there. Like probably dirt was no kind of here too. Well, that's what Ronnie said. So well, it's, it's, all over. It, uh, it's the topsoil that came from the park. It's down there behind the park. And I'll ask Ronnie about that tomorrow. But it's the, it came from the down there that, that, that but it also came from over here to uh, elementary school where they dug that out and stockpiled it to put it in place it too. So it came from more than one place right there. And, and that down the elementary school where they put that sidewalk is good topsoil. That was good dirt down through there. So, But they stockpiled all their topsoil that they took off for use down, you know, in other places too. But, uh, but like the, the mushroom, to me, are coming from the root, root system. And, you know, you you said you make a motion? Yes. Yeah, oh, the soul, is that what you said? I like the least we could do, but based on my, uh, I mean, I was born and raised here. I know what he had there before, mm -hmm. the sidewalk out there. And he's glad the sidewalk's out like the rest of us are. But I, I saw the dirt that was put in there. Mm -hmm. And I think he ought to, at least from a city standpoint, it's even that for how it was. Uh, it's not a big excavation or anything, no big expense, but, you know, try to give him some relief over there. And this was the sidewalk project that the state grant paid for that the yeah, city the contracted. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay. It, took those, it took all those trees, it took those old hatchery trees down there. So. Yes, sir. I'll second that. Is there, is there a monetary limit that you want to pay for something? I was just thinking that. I, I have no idea. My wife. Well, the, and two Stan, all that was put in was right there about three feet where the stone. I don't think it'll take much. I, I think, think a low limit is what, but you do what you want to, you all the, you know. Okay. Hello. Have a motion and second on how uh, we do it. What was the limit of decent topsoil cost? Three to five. Three to five hundred dollars for the topsoil. That's a that a load or that's a load, isn't it? Small, small load. Have a motion to say. Yes, we understand. We're, we're 
able to scoop out that old stuff there and put a $500 limit on Somebody wants to come up, I've got topsoil up there, I'll give you two loads of topsoil that you put in there, save you some money so you're not going to have to spend money on topsoil. So I'll give you the topsoil if you want to send your workers up there and load a couple loads up and bring it out there. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Who's the guy behind the mask over here? <laughs> okay. I think okay. He's old. We got a, uh, he's got a work order he turned in for a grant they got now for compressors. They're going to be in problem getting it signed or... Now, we've got the check from the right right here. Here. Hey, yeah. We've got the uh, check from the West Valley. Uh, he just turned that in today. Perfect. Uh, good deal. Good uh, we, we stay adjourned. Mm -hmm. Go right into the water board. Thank you all very much. Damn, thank, thank you, you man. Good luck. Have, have, have hey. Webb call me sooner rather than later. I've got my dozer up there and I, I can push that top so along. I, I, okay. I just thought probably 20 loads there at my house over there across the street. So okay. we've got it there available Thank now rather than later. So. Okay. Thank you, man. Okay. We call the water board meeting to order. And the uh, first item on the agenda is to the minutes of May 11th. Uh, do I have a motion? Yes. I'll make it. You make a motion. I'll yes. take it. The westbound, wasn't it? Um, the westbound? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, it, uh, no, both of them go into Both water, eastbound and westbound, both go into that right there. So. Oh. Yeah, it runs well, down something down new every day. It runs to the middle of the interstate, uh, down toward Lovitz. Oh, every day. Okay. You'll uh, have a motion. Can I ask a constituent question? <laughs> what dictates when, how long the the cycle is? Um, um, reading water meters? Or water yeah, meters? yeah. Reading water meters usually 30 days. Yeah. But, but, 
you know, we've been short-handed. We just okay. put two, and so some some months would run twenty-eight days. Some months would run or less. Days, <laughs> you know, but it's it, we've got a full staff in there now. Okay, they're working really good. Because I'm going anywhere from twenty-three to thirty-eight days, and it's yeah, it's I making it. You know, enough. for somebody that other than a minimum bill, it'll work out because it should make up the next month, you know. Sure, but I'm in print media, so it matters. <laughs> <laughs> but it's usually 30 days, you know, so, and they try to leave, read it within a day or two of that. Are they, with the full staff, you feel like we'll get back on oh, track? Yeah. yeah, I think we will. Okay. Good deal. When are we going to put a plan together to kind of go out and find these leaks? Well, that's what Ed's trying to do now. He's trying to get caught up with this other to find that leak. I mean, they feel is there, like is there not an outside company we can hire to come in here and do this? I know. Uh, we're looking at, I mean, look at it. It's creeping up every month. Yeah. They, you know, there's a lot of variables that, that's going into this thing, too, and, you know, uh, like, uh, Sam was telling me one tank over in Whiteside is at tw uh, 23 feet full, and come in next morning it's at 12 feet. So, but the water's not, they've isolated that. They turned off out there. The water leak is not on that side of the river, so it's backing up from this side some way. And it's between our pump station there at 41 Highway and the uh, Tennessee River. Because it's not under the Tennessee River, because we've been under there checking that out to make sure we don't have a leak under under there. That water line going across, so it's got to be someplace through there. And it, uh, Ed is planning on sort of trying to set it up to where they can come in at 10 or 11 o'clock and go out and do it when the traffic is down. Right. Because that's the way they found the lake. Right. And so what, what's our plan to do that? He's trying to get. Get everything caught up now uh, to where you can do that. You know, so they've been working, put in, they put in three more installations today. So I have no idea what, uh, you know, what his schedule is uh, been. Uh, I know he's got a lot going on in training two people, and it's going to be uh, probably him and Alan to go out and do it in order to get it done. So, uh, but I guarantee you. Uh, Ed to get it done in most uh, in the most expedient way and and uh, oh, best way for the time. He's a good guy, I know. But hopefully soon. We talked about it that day. Ed and I talked about it today. So uh, we're hoping that we can he can get out there and do that pretty soon. So, but uh, anybody else have anything? Oh no, we got to have a tour. <laughs> okay. Okay, so far rainfall to the, the for total for the year, 45.50 uh, inches. Uh, average month, 9.10 inches. And for the month, we had 3.62 inches of rain. And so that's get a lot of rain uh, out here. So. Do we have any dings this month or for May for too much over? Oh, we're, uh, I think right now we're over the whole year. We're uh, 52 inches for the year, and we're at 45. Sorry, I was talking about capacity of the sewer plant. Oh, no. Daily. We, the, we've been, since no, we had no rain this month. We're in great shape. All right. <laughs> and, uh, so, and it's finally gotten dry enough where Ed and them can go out and, and pull some manhole covers there in a uh, over there off of, uh, Cannon Street and that uh, field there and uh, down uh, uh, Phillips and Poxy. So. Still rehabbing them or are you done with the manholes? We're, no, we're going to rehab some more. We already rehabbed 25 of them. And so, you know, and that is for, they, but they, some of them, they, they, the ones that we wanted to do, they couldn't get to because it's too wet in there. It's still standing water. Seven BOD uh, violations, and uh, that has to do with the, the rainfall. Now, they did, we sounded the lagoons. The lagoons aren't, 
They're probably not even going to have to be cleaned out this year. We oh, wow. Uh, have to clean them out about every four years. Yeah. But they sounded them, and some places it only got three inches uh, in there. So we've sent the results to TDAC to get their uh, uh, idea of what we need to do. <laughs> Recommendation <Yeah>. plus. <laughs> so, but, but it, you know, things are looking up. If we could just keep the rain down for a little while to get us covered. I'll get right on that. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, we need to